Hey guys, uh, new video. Um, uh, this time I wanted to do something a bit different. Uh, I was watching Bull and Nick 1982's video on level 5 as one of his favorite game developers, and Benzo's video on that too, and I decided I wanted to do a video kind of like that, showcasing one of my favorite developers. Not level 5, I don't really have too much experience with level 5, I'd like to get into their games, but I'd like to just talk about one of my favorite developers. I might do the these kind of videos ever so often uh, to talk to kind of about like to talk about the games they released, what ones were my favorites, what ones I want to get for my collection, what ones I missed out on, and kind of what the developers like nowadays or if they're even still around. Um, so for my first uh, video like this, I wanted to talk about Rareware. Um, you know, a fantastic development company, uh, especially during the N64 days. They released so many classic games. Uh, unfortunately, nowadays, they're... they're... they're not what... they're not what they used to be, which is a shame. I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, for how I got into Rareware games, um, uh, they released, I think, like, over 40 games on the NES. They were, like, they released so many games on that console. Uh, you know, I, what is their, uh, you know, there's the Wizards and Warriors games, uh, the RC Pro-Am games, games I've never played, games I still want to add to my collection. Um, Battletoads is probably the game that probably introduced most people uh, to Rareware. I've got that here. Uh, I love Battletoads. Uh, this game was not my first Rareware game. Uh, I played it... Actually, I'd say I first played it maybe five, six years ago. Uh, my experience with this, with this particular game in the series wasn't until a few years ago. I love the game, very difficult, uh, tons of variety to it, especially considering back when it came out. Uh, each level is just completely different from the next. Um, very fun while still being brutally difficult. I don't know if I could ever beat this. One of these days I really want to try and sit down and go through this game. Um, I probably won't do it, but, but maybe. Um, but my first Rareware game was on the Super Nintendo, uh, and it's not not a game that I'm sure a lot of people started out with. Uh, I know I'll talk about three of the games that m most people probably started with and another which I haven't played and I definitely got to get around to. Uh, but my first Rare Rare game was Battletoads and Double Dragon, which is an interesting game in the series. Uh, you know, a crossover, of course. But it, it, it plays more like a Double Dragon game than a Battletoads game for the most part. I mean, it's got the Battletoads mechanics, you know, the crazy whacked out animations, um, and uh, brutal violent attacks. I mean, this game, the brutality in this game is quite surprising, the fact that it's on a Nintendo handheld, and you can grab woman's hair by by the back of their head and, like, smash their faces into the ground and just punch them in the gut and shit. Like, this game is pretty brutal, uh, the animations at least. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, but yeah, this game's really fantastic. Uh, it's not like the original... Battletoads on the NES where you've got a lot of platforming levels. This game cuts back on that. It's mostly just a, a beat-em-up. Uh, it's actually a fairly simple one at that. It's definitely the easiest game in the series. Uh, other than a, a ship level in the middle of the game, which if like it's ridiculously hard due to the controls. I find the controls just needlessly complicated for that level. Besides that, though, the game's fairly simple, uh, but very fun, especially with two players. Uh, the music in this game is phenomenal. Some of my favorite uh, music in any game, which leads me to one of my favorite things about Rareware as a company. Uh, the music in their games is always top-notch. I mean, some of my favorite songs in any game are from their, their games. Um, this game, I rented it back when I had a Super Nintendo. Never did own it. I uh, didn't get very far in it, and it wasn't until later in life where I gained a really great appreciation for this. Uh, you know, my first Rareware game, and still one of my favorites. Now, the game that really made Rareware super popular uh, with audiences, and, you know, a game that sold so many copies on the Super Nintendo, and is still highly regarded, and that is Donkey Kong Country. I also have Donkey Kong Country 2, and, of course, also number 3. Um, the first one, what can I say, just, just an amazing game. Uh, you know, really high-quality levels, challenging levels, Amazing graphics. I mean, the graphics are still great today, but back when this game came out, oh my god, absolutely insane. Um, 
you know, I don't have as much of a history with this game as a lot of people do. Uh, I didn't own it when I was a kid. I never read, rented it. Uh, my, in fact, my only experience with it was at a hotel one time I went to. I remember they had a, a game room where you had a bunch of Super Nintendos hooked up in a bunch of games, and this was one of them. It was the first time I had played it. Um, and, you know, I had played another Donkey Kong Country game. I'll get to that before this, but I played it there. Didn't really play it too much, didn't really get into it, maybe played a few levels. Uh, enjoyed it, but it wasn't until years later where I played it again, where I had a greater appreciation for it. Uh, fantastic music, as always. Uh, a hit game, almost everyone loves this game. Uh, definitely one of Rareware's best, uh, best accomplishments. Uh, the sequel, number two, is my favorite in the series, and one of my favorite games of all time. One of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Uh, I found this one to be maybe a bit less challenging, but I think the level designs are a bit more creative this time. Not as much of a focus on barrels, different kind of barrel gimmicks as the first one I found. Um, yeah, just a just, uh, more enjoyable game to me and one of my favorite Rare Rare games. Uh, this one I'd never played as a kid either. Uh, this one I played on emulator, I'd say... I'm, I would say maybe 10 years ago now. Uh, so I do have some nostalgia for this one. But the main nostalgia, nostalgic one for me is the third one. This is the only one I played as a kid. I didn't own it, but one of my friends had it. Every time we'd go, I'd go to their house, uh, we'd always play the two-player mode, taking turns, going through this game. It's the easiest of the three, uh, but I really like this game. It's my second favorite of the series. I really love the atmosphere in this game. Uh, just a really, I don't know, it's just a really foreboding atmosphere that I really loved. I loved the music. It was very very quirky. Uh, you know, the levels were uh, de were definitely not as challenging as previous, but I still thought this game had some creativity behind it, and I loved the ex fully explorable world map. Uh, that was a very cool feature about this game. Uh, I don't know, a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of hate about this game, as well as the second, uh, I know, because of Donkey Kong not being in them, but I don't know, I always found that the first game Donkey Kong controlled sluggish compared to, say, Diddy Kong, and I love Dixie Kong's hair spinning move. I think that adds quite a bit of gameplay variety uh, to me. But yeah, the Donkey Kong Country games, amazing games, uh, and a rich part of Rareware's history. And they, it, you know, it did great favors for Nintendo. Um, you know, and that collaboration was nice to see. Another really popular game for the Super Nintendo, uh, you know, a port of the wildly popular arcade game, Killer Instinct, is a game I've never played. I really want to. I'm not too big into fighting games, so I don't know how much I'd enjoy it, but there's a lot of fans of that game. Uh, and it's a fairly cheap game as far as Super Nintendo games go, so I've definitely got to get it. But that's another Rare Rare game that's considered a classic. Uh, people really want a third one, uh, but I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I'll talk a bit, a bit about that later in terms of you know what Rare Rare is doing nowadays. Moving on to the N64, um, they released a game called Blast Core, uh, which is a game a lot of people love. It seems to be kind of like a tank. I don't know, you just blow stuff up from what I've seen, but it's got a nice puzzle element to it, and apparently it's brutally difficult, uh, which, you know, if a lot of Rare Rare's games actually do te uh, or did tend to be quite difficult. Uh, but Blast Core is a game I really got to get. It's not too expensive either, so uh, I just haven't found it in my area, and I don't know, eBay, I'm not really willing to go to eBay for it just yet, but I've heard that's a fantastic game. It looks amazing. Uh, and is considered one of their best N64 games. Um, you know, when in terms of the N64, this is when Rare went on a huge winning streak. Every single game they would put out got amazing reviews. Everybody loved them. I mean, it was at around this time you could say that Rare could do no wrong. Uh, really fantastic stuff they put on N the N64. In 1997, Rareware released probably their most popular game. Uh, this game pretty much revolutionized uh, console shooters. I mean, first-person shooters were big on the PC at the time. Uh, you know, you had Quake, Doom, things like that. But this is the game that really made split-screen split screen gaming a popular thing in households and at parties and things like that. And that game is GoldenEye 007. Uh, I have a lot of memories with this game. Um, you know, I, I, I got this back when it came out on the 64 and just... Like, it wasn't the first first-person shooter I played. Uh, you know, I played Spear of Destiny and Doom and things like that on the PC way back in the day. I loved those games, but 
the multiplayer in this is what sold me. Uh, you know, you know, me and friends from like elementary school, we'd play this all the time. Uh, just had so much fun with it. Uh, but the single player is really what I think drew me in. Uh, you know, the missions were always fun to play through. I remember, you know, being a pretty young kid, I remember having so much fun, like, just using all the different cheats and, like, throwing remote mines at the scientists in the facility level and just blowing them all up and then replaying the level again. I don't know, I was pretty sadistic. It was weird. Uh, I do you know, I'd, I'd record VHS tapes of me playing the game. Like, I'd go through all the levels, try to unlock all the cheats, play through on all the difficulty levels. Like, I was obsessed with this game. Um, you know, like I'm sure a lot of people were. I will say this game doesn't hold up as well as a lot of games. Uh, I played, tried to play it not too long ago, and I don't know, the missions... <sighs> the mission uh, objectives are kind of obtuse, uh, and, you know, it, it's a fairly run-and-gun shooter. Uh, a lot of the en levels have really frustrating respawning enemies. Uh, a game they released later... I'll say it just I'll say it now. Actually, I'll, you know, I'll move on to that now. But GoldenEye, you know, lots of nostalgia for it. Not an amazing game now like it was back in the day. However, a game that I feel has held up remarkably well is Perfect Dark, uh, the follow-up to GoldenEye in terms of, you know, just being a first-person shooter uh, with the same engine. Um, I know an Xbox Live port was released uh, with updated HD graphics. If you haven't played Perfect Dark, check out that version. It's the ultimate version, I feel. It fixed the pretty awful frame rate of the N64 version. Uh, lots of nostalgia with this game. Uh, I remember I didn't own an expansion pack, and I know you needed the expansion pack to play the single player of this game, so I'd remember it. I'd always rent the game and rent the expansion pack with it, uh, play it for like a week, return it, and then immediately rent it again. I was obsessed with this game just as I was with GoldenEye. The multiplayer in this game is better than GoldenEye. So many cool weapons in this game. Uh, you know, the storyline is complete cheese, but it's awesome. Um, you know, the missions were not as obtuse this time around. It's just a much better playing game, I find. I uh, really loved this game, playing multiplayer with my friends and going through the single player. Uh, this and GoldenEye, just such great first-person shooters on the 64 and some of Rareware's finest achievements. Another game Rare released for the 64 was Diddy Kong Racing, which has a lot of fans. Uh, I know a lot of people love that game. I played it back when I was a kid, but I don't know. I always kind of found it inferior to Mario Kart. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate what it... I, I Rather, I should say, I liked a lot of the stuff I, it did. You know, I loved how there was different vehicles than just the carts. I mean, there was, the, what, the airplanes, the... I think there was, like, submarine vehicles. I haven't played it in years. I don't own it. I should really get it again. It's another game that's not too expensive. Um, but I remember the story mode being very difficult. I don't know, I couldn't get very far into it, and I don't know, whenever I'd play it with friends, we just never had as much fun as we did with Mario Kart. Although, I'm pretty sure it's one of those games, if I play it again, I'll love it this time, and actually find it to be better than Mario Kart 64. I don't know, Diddy Kong Racing, it's always kind of a, either like it better than Mario Kart 64, or you don't. Um, but yeah, as a kid, I don't know, I was never too into it. Um, but, you know, it's definitely one of the more noteworthy rare games, and a lot of people really do love that game. The next game, which I do own on the Xbox 360 in a upgraded HD port, don't own it on the 64. I do, I should still get the N64 version, because this is uh, one of my favorite rare, rare games. I absolutely love it, and that's Banjo-Kazooie, you know, another fan favorite. Um, you know, I, I feel this game kind of took what was so successful about Mario 64 and just made everything better, in my opinion. Uh... <laughs> I know this is going to be unpopular opinion, but I actually prefer Banjo-Kazooie to Mario, Mar Super Mario 64. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'm going to let you guys know something, actually, uh, something interesting about me. I don't care for Super Mario 64. Uh, yeah, I know, pretty big, you know, you know, I don't think too many people don't care for that game, but I don't know, I've tried getting into it so many times, and... I don't know, I just lose interest every time. And it's not like I don't like that style of game, you know, a 3D, classic 3D platformer, because Banjo-Kazooie, uh, it's basically the same type of game. Uh, but I absolutely adore Banjo-Kazooie, yet cannot get into Super Mario 64. Uh, I might talk about that a bit more in some, in kind of another video I'm planning to do, basically games that I can't really get into, but so many people love. Uh, but yeah, Banjo-Kazooie, a uh, great looking game, uh, Really great cast of characters, really charming game. 
very fun worlds worlds to explore. Uh, you know, I, did, I found it, I don't know, I just found it so fun and rewarding finding all the jiggies. Uh, I will say I've never beaten Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I've gotten to the end at least four times. I cannot beat the final boss. I can't do it. Too hard. I, and that's a common th theme with uh, Rareware's games. Uh, I find that they tend to make final battles ridiculously difficult, uh, and Banjo-Kazooie is no exception. Uh, but love Banjo-Kazooie, and the funny thing about it is I never played it when I was a kid. I always had seen the commercials. I you know, I knew, knew it was a popular game, but none of my friends played it or had it, and I didn't either. So Banjo-Kazooie is a game I played not too long ago, and I loved every second of it. Uh, the sequel, Banjo-Tooie, I haven't played yet. It's kind of one of the more pricey N64 games, so I'm waiting till I can find a good deal on it, but I'm sure I'll love that one too, and definitely am excited to play that one. I know it's also got an Xbox 360 port. That might be the way I'll play the game, but we'll see. Uh, in 1999, Rareware released my favorite game of all time, and that is Jet Force Gemini. Uh, and you'll probably know that it was, is my favorite game if you've looked at my YouTube channel page. Uh, what can I say about this game? A true masterpiece. Uh, and kind of a game that flew by a lot of people's radars, I feel, uh, when it came out and still today. Uh, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of people, of course, have played Goldeneye, Perfect Dark, uh, Banjo-Kazooie, and things like that. But I find a lot of people kind of missed out on this one. Uh, but those that have played it, I feel, you know, know that it's an amazing game. Uh, for those that haven't played it, kind of like a, it, it, it plays like just a third-person shooter. Uh... But it's got this awesome sci-fi style. It, uh, the music in this game, oh my god. It's got like this Star Wars kind of feel, a John Williams kind of feel, but it's it's just crazy epic and catchy. Uh, you know, you control these three characters, uh, only one at first, but you find the other two eventually. Uh, there's a lot of collectibles to find. The exploration is what makes this game so great, though. Uh, it's just so fun to explore the different environments. You can choose what areas you want to go to. Later in the game, these areas open up and there's just so many different places to check out, uh, characters to talk to. Uh, it's got some platforming, you know, uh, some puzzle elements to it. Uh, the shooting is just really fun and unique. Uh, because of the very interesting control scheme in this game, uh, it's it plays like no other game I've ever played. And I think that's due to the N N64 controller. Uh, which is why, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, a remake of this game, and I'm not sure it would work so well with updated controls. I find this game works just well, just fine on the 64, maybe with a bit of a learning curve, but uh, it's got a great challenge to it. Uh, you know, I, I might do a video talking about this game in greater depth, because I just love it so much. I uh, played it when I was a kid, loved it to death then, so, so of course, you know, there's some nostalgia with this game too. I would rent this game so many times, uh, I never did own it, surprisingly, but I'd rent it, uh, I'd get so far with my save file, and because I wanted to continue off that save file, I'd, like, write an initial on the Blockbuster case that the game came in, so I knew what copy was mine, so I'd keep renting that same copy over and over again. I'd record VHS footage of this game. Uh, a close friend of mine also loved the game, he owned it, I'd borrow it at times, uh, just... I don't know, that's such a phenomenal game uh, with one of the harder final bosses I've encountered in a game. Uh, actually, all the bosses in this game are tough. Uh, but yeah, just a phenomenal game. I, I feel it's Rare's greatest game. Of course, we've never got a sequel. I'd love to see a sequel to this. Never going to happen, of course. Uh, you know, an underrated game, but for those that have played it, they love it. Uh, a common issue is you have to rescue all the tribals. Uh, those that know what I'm talking about, uh, it's either a love it or hate it thing. I... I I like getting all the tribals. It makes you explore these environments further, and there's a lot of content there where you have to go after the tribals that you don't see normally, which is really cool. Uh, very vast world to explore in this game. But yeah, I, I, I'll go on enough. Uh, that's enough about this game, but uh, Masterpiece, my favorite game of all time. I highly doubt any game will come close to this ever. And, you know, this game is one of the reasons why Rare is my favorite developers, or should I, I should really say was. So after Rare created my favorite game of all time, uh, they happened to create my least favorite game uh, from them on the 64, and that's Donkey Kong 64. Now, I know there's actually a lot of people that like this game. Uh, I know, I remember when it came out, uh, just everybody loved it, you know, it had a lot of hype surrounding it. Uh, I didn't play it back in the day, I'll be honest, I didn't. Maybe if I did, my opinion would be a bit different, but 
I played this, I want to say maybe eh, two years ago now, and I, I couldn't stand it. I, uh, like, the game is overwhelming to a fault, I think. I mean, the amount of collectibles in this game, I mean, Rare's always known for tons of collectibles in their game, but they went overboard in 64. I mean, the amount of collectibles in Donkey Kong 64 is insane. Uh, I found the worlds very maze-like and confusing. I never knew, knew what the hell I was doing, where I was going. The direction was just all over the place. Uh, so many different characters, so many different collectibles. Uh, I didn't find it, the platforming to be all that fun. I found the controls to be a bit stiff, too. I don't know. I just... I, could, I can't get into Donkey Kong 64. I don't care for it. It's... Their only game they've released on the 64 that I just plain don't like. Uh, but I do know a lot of people that uh, greatly enjoy that game. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not known to be a universally hated game. At the same time, though, I have heard people kind of reverse their opinion on it. People that played it back in the day and loved it, and then now say it's not as great as they remembered, or, you know, that it is too overwhelming. I, I think it's, you know, I think it's an example of a game that where there's just, there's too much. There's just too much going on. Uh, but yeah, Donkey Kong 64. I, I don't own it, but I do want to get it, you know, for the collection at some point. Rare's last game on the 64 happens to be one of my favorites, and that's Conker's Bad Fur Day. Uh, now, I do know Mickey's Speedway USA did come out before this. That's a game I don't own. I don't know if I really want that one. I heard it's a competent Mario Kart clone, but I'm not too into Mickey characters or anything like that, or Disney in general. Yeah, I know I'm crazy, but yeah. Uh, they did release that, though, but this game, now this game's amazing. I remember when this came out, the controversy surrounding it was just crazy. The fact that this could come out on a Nintendo console. I remember the really dirty commercials that were played on TV surrounding about this game. Uh, I don't know, I think, when did this come out? 2001? I think I was, I don't know, I don't think I was quite old enough to be playing this, but I rented it anyways uh, and loved it. A really unique platformer, very funny. Though it tends to rely on references rather than actual humor at times, but I'll cut it some slack there. Um, the multiplayer in this game, oh, so fun to play with friends. Uh, it, some of the multiplayer modes, especially the beach mode where, you know, there's a bunch of French refugees, uh, teddy bears, and they're trying to, you know, blow up this base and you're, you know, another, other players play as the teddy bear, the teddy bears and you're trying to execute them and stuff. Very fun. Uh, the single player, also very fun, very challenging. This game's brutally difficult. Uh, now, Conker's Bad Fur Day is the most spent, expensive game uh, from Rareware on the 64. Of course, could probably due to the fact that it was released so late in the console's life. I don't think they did too many copies of this game. But yeah, overall, a great send-off to the 64 and, you know, a great send-off from Rare for the 64. Uh, after this game is where things started to get a bit hairy for them, I felt. Um... Actually, before I met, go too far into this, uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day was, had like an updated, redone version for the Xbox. Uh, that one, I feel the single player is better in that one. They fixed a lot of the control issues with this game. The whole war chapter is so much better in that. But they fucking ruined the multiplayer. It's this generic Halo sci-fi clone online multiplayer shooter. It's absolute garbage. I'd say if you're going to try to get Conker's Bad Fur Day, just get the 64 version. The multiplayer is better in this, and the single player, well, a bit worse, is definitely still playable. And of course, Rare's last game with Nintendo, their only game released on the GameCube, uh, on the GameCube, rather, was Star Fox Adventures, originally supposed to be Dinosaur Planet before, you know, it got all Star Fox. Um, you know, I like this game, actually. I think it's, you know, it's, it's not perfect. Uh, it's kind of derivative, I guess you could say, but I think the puzzles are well designed, I think it's overall a great game. Uh, but this kind of, I don't know, I don't know, it, it did kind of leave kind of a bad taste in my mouth, I guess. Uh, I do prefer it to some of the other Star Fox games that came after it, though, like Assault and things like that. Um, of course, after this is when Microsoft bought Rare, and that's where things started to fall apart, as everyone knows. Uh, their first game released on the Xbox was Grabbed by the Ghoulies, which is a frankly a terrible game. Uh, just basically, it's just a whole bunch of interconnected mini games, I'd say, in like a castle. I haven't played it in a while, but it I don't know, just not a fun game. Just very tedious and frustrating, uh, and definitely not up to par in terms of the quality you'd expect from Rare. And when this game came out, uh, people were really kind of kind of mad because. 
Uh, from what I can remember, it took a while for that game to come out, and people were questioning, like, come on, Rare, bring out something for Xbox, what are you going to do? Uh, so after the grab by the Ghoulies, they did the Conker's Live Reloaded remake, which, you know, not that great. Uh, and it's just, of course, just a remake. And at this time, people were really questioning, like, what, Rare, what the fuck are you doing? Like, two games released on the Xbox. Uh, you know, Microsoft spent millions on Rare, and that's what they gave them? Uh, I don't know what was happening with the company. I don't know if... I don't know what was happening, but very... Two very disappointing games. I, I'd even say that Star Fox Adventures 2 is disappointing. So, at the time this came out, I think... I don't know, something was happening r Rare. Um, so, of course, after the Xbox... Uh, you know, the 360 came out uh, with two launch titles from Rare, Perfect Dark Zero and Cameo. Uh, don't own Cameo. I've heard that's actually a decent game, though. I should really get around to that. I've played the demo, wasn't too impressed, but maybe I need to play more of it. Uh, Perfect Dark Zero. Uh, again, like Grabbed by the Ghoulies, really, I think this is a terrible game. Uh, you know, it's just follow the objective marker and just shoot guys, and just the aiming was just atrocious. You could adjust with the options and it wouldn't help. The multiplayer was garbage. Uh, you know, nice graphics, but uh, I hated what they did with the character, too. Like, she's annoying. Joanna is annoying in this game. Uh, but yeah, a terrible game. It was at this point where I was starting to feel, like, rare. What, what's happening? Like, <laughs> uh, you know, just a very disappointing, awful game. A, a terrible sequel, really. Uh, after the, after Perfect Dark Zero, they did Viva Pinata, which I know is a highly regarded game. I, I played it. I wasn't too impressed with it. Uh, I found it kind of basic. I Well, not really basic, but I don't know. It just wasn't... It didn't suit my tastes, I guess. It, it seemed like a Harvest Moon style game, but uh, I don't know. That's, that's fine, but it's still... I feel it just doesn't have the magic that, uh, you know, their N64 games or Super Nintendo games had. It was just missing something. Uh, and of course, uh, not too long ago, they released Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, uh, which I respect the innovation there in terms of, you know, making your own vehicles. Like, I mean, that's a huge risk, uh, with the gameplay of that game. But again, like I would have much rather had, like, I'm sure most people or would have wanted uh, just a proper follow-up to Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, and they just didn't deliver that. Uh, now when, during the, when they were making these Xbox games, Xbox 360, Xbox games, they were still making some Game Boy games, uh, Game Boy Advance games. Uh, I played a couple of them, Saber Wolf I've played, uh, banjo Kuzi Grunty's Revenge I've played. Uh, very middling games though, uh, nothing too special there. Um, so yeah, I, a lot of the stuff that Rare released, uh, you know, lately is just, I don't know, not up to par, at least in my opinion. Uh, and of course, not too long ago, they've decided to completely almost abandon game development entirely and make avatars and connect sports. Yeah. I like I don't know. I don't know what's what's happened with them. Once what was once one of my favorite game developers is just I don't know, just crumbled. Uh it it really is a shame. I hope they can get back on track someday and make some proper games, you know, a Killer Instinct 3 or a Jet Force Gemini 2 or something, or something completely new that's awesome and has the magic of those old N64 games. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my look or my my views on Rareware as a company. Uh, still one of my favorite developers, as the title says. I, I can't neglect those N64 games and the fact that they released Jet Force Gemini, you know, my favorite game of all time. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments, you know, what are some of your favorite developers and what you feel about Rareware and some of their games. What what are your favorite Rareware games? What are your favorite least or least favorite Rareware games? Um, and I'll see you guys next time.